guys welcome back to the channel so for today i just wanted to show you guys how i did this freestyle design i did uh basically it's like a nude pink with some crystals and some little flowers and a marble design don't forget to like this video guys and subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the post notifications before we begin the video so you guys can join my little family over here all right so first and foremost i already pushed back her cuticle now we're just going to go in with the fine sanding band and we're just going to remove the shine go around the cuticle area but not touching the skin to remove all the dead cuticle around her um, cuticle area of course and we're just gonna be doing this for all the nails the sanding bins that I buy I buy them at my local Cosmo Prof store that is a licensed store for nail techs cosmetologists hair things like that so yeah it's important to remove the shine I do have it at a very low velocity and it is this video is sped up so it's not like I'm going this fast I'm actually taking my time and making sure that all of the dead cuticle and the shine off the nail is removed. Now, I'm going to go ahead and start adding these tips. These tips I got on Amazon and the, the glue that I'm using is KDS glue. Both of these things I buy off Amazon. Um, before we started her nails, we did do a soak off just to, guys, to, just to let you guys know. So the tips that I got, I really, really like. I really like the shape. So if you're going to do any kind of coffin or stiletto, these nails will work out just fine. And they also help you um, get the shape a lot easier without so much work because some of the tips are a little bit harder to get into shape because they are a little bit on the, I guess, wider side. And these are on the more narrow side. So... I did the right hand, now we're gonna do her left hand and we're gonna do the same thing, just getting some KDS glue, applying it to her natural nail on the free edge and grabbing the nail that I think will fit. Now, when it comes to, I guess, experience, I kinda already know which one looks like it's gonna fit. Um, 85 to 90% of the time, I'm usually right. Um, and the other, I guess, 15 or 10% of the time, um, if I get it too close and it looks like it may not fit, I try to like kind of place it towards just to make sure it, it is going to fit. But most of the time, I guess from experience, you just start, you know, kind of knowing which is going to fit the best. Um, but I'm not always going to be 100% right. So sometimes I'm going to look at a nail and even if I have to, I will take it off and start all over because I want it to look you know the best so here I am we're just starting to uh, to remove the tip so we can size what size she wants to get or what length the better you get so I am just um, going by her not her pinky but I'm kind of looking I start really at the um, the ring finger to see that one's gonna be the one that sends that sets the tone for the other length so if my ring finger is, you know, a certain length, it's easier to measure up to the other ones only because the pinky is so hard to adjust to to kind of like measure. It's kind of weird. You guys understand if you if you do it already or when you start doing nails because the pinky is hard. It's just like you got to guesstimate the pinky and then the ring finger is really what sets the, the tone for the length because it's easier to kind of measure up towards the middle finger so if you measure the middle finger with the ring finger it's easier i hope that makes sense guys and i know i said in every video but it is a little hard to describe sometimes what i am trying to say so now we're measuring them up from hand from each finger to finger so pinky to pinky ring to ring middle to middle and if i feel like one of them is bigger than obviously or longer i mean i will cut it down so everything looks fine all the nails measure up perfectly and we're gonna go ahead and take this file. This is a 100-100 file, and I get these at Cosmoprof, and I do have other ones that I like to buy from, from what is it called, from Sally's. I was gonna say Beauty Secrets, but Beauty Secrets is the brand. So these, um, the brand I really don't remember, but the ones that I really, really love are from Sally's, and they're the Beauty Secrets 100 grit file or 100 slash 180 grit file. But anyway, when it comes to doing the coffin shape, you start from one side to the other. So you don't want it 
take too much time when when doing this part because if you not the, the time part but you don't want to take too much time on each side so what you want to do is go back and forth back and forth just to make sure you're not taking off too much on one side more than the other and that way that you're basically playing it safe and you're not going to look at it when you're done and like oh my gosh i took off too much off one side and if it turns out that you did please remove that tip start all over because that is how you're going to get better don't have acid um i've done things where i'm like doing when in the beginning of my career where i'd be like no i can fix it i can fix it it, it may look like that but after the acrylic it'll be fine and no like just take it off it's not gonna work so if you're taking off too much product off one side, just go ahead right now, take it off because it is so easy to take it off when it's just the tip because after you apply the acrylic and it looks crooked and then you're mad at yourself and you're like, why did I do that? You know, just better safe than sorry, remove it and start over. Just like if you applied a tip crooked on, onto the nail, it'll be the same thing. In the in the beginning i did apply one of them crooked so i removed it and put it back on it didn't take no more than one minute literally because or maybe two minutes the most but it doesn't take that long guys like it's better to fix the nail now before you know it gets worse so anyway now we're just gonna go ahead and i'm gonna take my electronic file or my e-file and this is my Koopa Manny Pro, and I am taking the sanding band that I use to remove the shine. And I'm just going to into just the tip, not the natural nail. Do not touch the natural nail again. Just on the tip, remove the, the I guess the height kind of, or just remove the bulkiness where the nail and natural nail meet. Just so that when you apply the acrylic, it is a lot more easier to blend. So basically right here, we are blending the tip to match the surface of the nail plate if that makes any sense because when you really look at a fake nail you can see that it is um, a little bit high on the higher side so it's you know kind of basically on top of the natural nail so you kind of want to align it to your natural nail and we're going to be doing this on all the nails and yes, I started removing my Kobe Bryant tips, guys, because I just wanted to do something different. I never get a chance to do my nail, so tomorrow is what I'm going to do. So watch out for that video, you guys, because I am missing my nails so bad. I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, but more, I don't know. I wanted to say more than likely I want to do like a, like a French, but at the same time, I hate doing French on myself. When it comes to ombre, it's so much easier, but even, even that is so hard. Um, I don't know what I want to do. So if you guys have any ideas, let me down. Let me know in the comments down below, guys. I'm tired, guys. Sorry. Um, but yeah, I was thinking of doing the, the pink and white nails. Not the ones that are ombre, like I said. The ones that are actually a French smile line. Uh, but I'm just, I don't know, guys. Maybe I should just try it and see how it goes. I really want to, but I know for a fact that my right hand is going to come out horrible because I am not left handed basically anyway so i kind of removed the the glue off the nail with that little buffer just so that i don't damage the natural nail plate and be more abrasive with that so anyway here i am applying a white the white is from me a secret and this white is so amazing i love it so much you can do great 3dr with this as well um, but yeah, I already applied it to three-fourths of the nail and then I applied it on the cuticle area This is honestly the easiest way for my application when it comes to application because like I said I don't do the one ball two ball three ball method only because I don't know. I just go by I just go by what I think is best if I think I need to add more I add more That's just how I do it and that's what works for me um so yeah guys don't ever feel pressured like oh well, i need to do the one ball or i need to do the two ball or blah 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 i need to do the three ball like no just do whatever you think you know basically just practice first get used to the the acrylic balls and you know making the beads and everything because that's what's more important and then you can start little by little getting better i don't think i'm 100 percent where i want to be so i know that i need to you know keep practicing keep taking clients try to get better and um you're not gonna get better by not practicing and you're not gonna get better by not taking clients that was my mistake number one in the beginning of my career I procrastinated too much to take clients because I was so scared that I was going to mess everything up, mess up their nails, or they weren't going to like them. But hey, that is how you begin, you guys. Like, 
Start with your family members. Actually practice. Take the time to learn about everything. Educate yourself. Um, you know, practice, practice, practice because that's going to show in your work if you actually really like to do what you like to do, if you like to do nails or not. Um, more, most of the time people, you know, they say they, oh, I wanted to learn how to do nails. I don't know. It's, I guess it's like a trend now. Like people just, you know, everybody wants to do it. But I can tell when people are actually serious about it. They're actually like really into their nails. They love getting their nails done or they, you know, they like watching videos or they like to talk about it. And, you know, those people, I love to, you know, tell them like, yeah, if you want to do it, you can do it. Um, you know, it's not easy. Like nothing's ever going to be easy. Um, this industry is not the easiest, you know, you come across some rude people, you come across, you know, people that don't understand the business part of it. And it's, you know, unfortunate and it's understandable as well. People don't own, sometimes when people don't own a business, they don't get, you know, why, um, you work a certain way, but, um, that's just how it goes. You know, your clients that, you know, understand, um then you know they're well appreciated and the ones that don't well you can't you know be upset with them they just don't understand you know so it's okay too and you should never be that person to like when a client's trying to get snippy with you you don't want to be snippy back only because it's like well what if they're having that's how i think what if they're having a bad day or maybe they just don't get it like you know and you're not you being you know positive and not having that negative energy towards them that's going to be better for you because you don't want to spread bad energy because like basically like if you're that person that wants to clap back at clients i just don't believe you should because people will screenshot and talk about you and like oh she did this and then other people won't understand your side of the story and you know people sometimes people will believe them because they're the client you know so Either way, I'm not that type of person and I'm always going to be as respectful as I can to everyone, whether they're, you know, in a bad mood or whatever, you know, you pick your clients anyway when you're your own boss. So that's the great part about that. I don't really deal with bad people, thankfully. So um, I don't, you know, I'm grateful I don't have to deal with that. And when I do, I don't care. I let God deal with it and move on with my life. You know what I mean? It's the best thing you could do. some i got some messages i really need to go through them because yeah there's a lot anyway so guys i'm just applying basically on the middle finger i applied cover pink by me a secret cover pink basically has a little bit of glitter into that and then on the pointer we're just adding the white again by me a secret and then we're just going to um finish that off and basically you'll see how i use the beads and how i clean it up so that there is less filing to do at the end and the brush that i am using is my number 20 brush from my local nail supply store and i'm just wiping my brush as much as i can so when you see me um you know i guess kind of feather it away it's kind of going on the paper on the side of me you just can't see it but i am cleaning it as much as I can to have better application because if your brush is really, really dirty, it's really, really hard to clean and make sure that after you're done with your applications, your brush is sitting in, you know, either acetone or brush cleaner. Um, I do suggest brush cleaner the best when it comes to cleaning your brushes, but I understand sometimes it's like, whoa, what a waste of money when it's really like acetone, you know what I mean? But I do feel that it does clean it a little better depending, but if you clean your brush right, right away after you use it, then most likely it'll be okay soaking acetone after each client. Just don't forget leaving it there because I've done it a couple of times where I mess up my brush and it starts getting dented at the end for leaving it on there and it doesn't work the same. So then you have to mold it back up some way, somehow.
also on her left hand, this is the hand I'm doing now, I got a little bit of a closer view because with the other one, I was kind of giving her a one-on-one -on -one, uh, tutorial how I apply the acrylic because she's interested in learning how to do nail applications. So I was just showing her on the other hand, but in this hand, you can clearly see it a lot better. And I did add the first bead there, and I'm just going to finish it off with... Um, on the cuticle area but i am just going to finish this hand and let you guys watch and then we'll proceed to the next step All right, so I went back to this hand and we're just gonna be adding some white from Me A Secret and I'm just kind of like spreading it around. Here's a closer look. And I'm just kind of trying to do a, trying to do a marble nail art here. So it doesn't have to be perfect guys, it's art. Let's, let's you know, not waste too much time on one thing. Um, practice makes perfect like I said before. We're adding a little bit of pink there too, only because I want it to look a little bit on the more natural side. And after that, I'm gonna go ahead and add some gold that I mixed up myself. Um, to be honest, I don't know exactly what's in it, but I do know that I added um, gold pigment from Young Nails and I added some gold um, glitter, some finer gold glitter and a little bit of chunkier gold holographic glitter, if you guys can see that. There is, um, acrylic in that mix too so here you guys can see i'm capping it the clear acrylic that i'm using is me a secret and i'm just applying that to cover up the design and to add obviously stability in the foundation as well and we're going to be doing this on both hands
Okay guys, so now I'm taking that same 100, 100 grit file and I am filing the nail going towards the sides and doing the free edge and removing any acrylic underneath the nail simultaneously that it's helping shape the nail because I am I am filing at an angle as you guys can see. Um, we are doing the sides first and then the free edge and we're going back onto the sides. Um, you guys, literally, I just learned all this stuff mostly by actually taking clients. I'm going to go back to that because I think it's really, really important. If you are finished with nail school or you want to start taking clients, stop wasting your time, guys. If you have all the things that you need or even if you don't, get things little by little. Trust me, that's how I did it because even if you don't start right away, at least little by little you start building the products up or you know kind of collecting acrylic powders or glitters any little things like that rhinestones primer um things like that files buffers you know just start collecting things and practice while you start collecting things because little by little you'll already have the things that you need get a lamp whenever you can if it's your birthday or christmas you know ask for these things um if family members want to help you out this is the best way because obviously it takes a village and people that believe in you will do it. And if nobody believes in you, forget them and do it on your own. Don't let nobody tell you you can't do anything because people will only say that because they can't do it, basically. You know, if you guys ever heard that from the pursuit of happiness, those are great words I live by. If you just because somebody tells you you can't do it, it's because they can't do it. So they could, they're going to tell you you can't do it. So don't believe them. Do whatever you want to do. Do what makes you happy and sacrifice whatever it takes. Save the money. Don't go out to eat. Spending all your money. Don't go to Starbucks. Save your money until you feel like, you know, okay, I have enough money. I'm going to buy this. Even if it's week by week basis, save a little bit of money. Take an extra $20. Get some gel polish. Get some acrylic. Get some top coat. Whatever you think it is. Get a better brush. You guys, if you guys only knew, all the money that I would spend for the past couple of years, even when I wasn't taking clients, I would spend all my money, every little penny, on nail art or on, you know, files, on liquid or trying new things out. Why? Because I, you know, I wanted to make that sacrifice, even though I still didn't see the light at the end of the tunnel. I was just like, hmm, I still love to do this. I still want to, you know figure out when I can do this, where I can do it. Cause everybody used to complain about the smell of the acrylic in the house. And I'm like, well, I'm never gonna do this. And like, everybody's complaining. And one day I was just like, well, they're gonna get over it. But I'm not saying you should do that because you gotta respect where you live too. But I mean, now it's like, okay, I wish I would have started a lot earlier because you know, things would have been different, but at the same time, guys, like, that's life. Like, you live and you learn, you make your mistakes, whatever. Because I used to look at nails and be like, oh my gosh, um, I can't get them like hers. How, do, how does he get it so close to the cuticle? How, what am I doing wrong? And it's like, literally, it was trial and tribulation. That's how you learn, if that makes sense. I don't even know if that was the proper term, trial and tribulation, but okay. You know, basically, it was trial and error. I think that's what I was trying to say. Anyway, so as you guys can see, the next step would be is to remove all of the, all of the, basically, what am I trying to say? Oh, basically, I'm trying to remove all of the extra acrylic that may be stuck onto the skin. And for a long time, that's another thing that I would wonder. I'm like, why, why is it that the nails are lifting and why don't they last? And it's because I didn't really know how to basically go around the cuticle area to create that, basically, the barrier that there basically needs to be it has to be the skin then you have to see be able to see the natural nail and then you have to be able to see the um what should we call it the the artificial now the acrylic so you need to see the skin your natural nail and the acrylic that way you know there's enough space in between that your nails are not gonna lift you clean up as much as you can there's nothing stuck to the cuticle that's gonna um cause lifting so because a lot of people don't understand what a lot of people don't understand is that if you don't remove this part right here if you don't if you don't do this part right here you're gonna leave all of that stuff that's flying you see that all of the um extra acrylic that shouldn't be on the skin all of that is gonna touch the skin the skin is gonna touch the acrylic it's gonna start spreading the oils from the natural nail and the natural skin 
and it's gonna cause lifting. It's gonna start popping off. Just kind of like when something gets stuck and you use butter to, to, to remove it. Or so, you know how like a ring gets stuck to your finger and the only way people know how to remove it is like by adding butter because it's oily, it slips right off. Same thing with the nail. It'll lift right off because it is oily and it's easier to kind of separate kind of like the ring and the finger. If that makes sense, you guys. I know that was a weird analogy, but that's the best thing I could think of. All right, so we're gonna take my purple buffer that I get at Cosmoprof and I'm just gonna buff the nails and I'm also gonna be going underneath the nails and this is how I remove a lot of the acrylic that doesn't even wanna be there anymore. It's already coming off of the nail from filing under but you do have to remove it and this is the best way I know how. Alright, I'm dusting them off and now we're going to get ready to do some 3D art. This is my crystal brush and it is a brush that I got off Crystal Nails. I don't know the website on the top of my head, but I will be leaving it in the description box below for you guys so you guys can um, try and purchase it. I think it's like around $16. It wasn't too bad and I've had it for like maybe over a year, maybe two years actually. It's pretty a pretty good brush. Um, so yeah, we're just doing like three beads like a little basic flower basically I lay, I lay it down and I let it kind of Start polymerizing and let it get a little stiff so that it's easier to mold and move around if you try to move around right away when you lay it down It's very liquidy and it doesn't want to be like a mold and move around So this is the best thing to do is basically apply it on there make sure that your bead is at a good consistency and you know try to move it around it's really hard in the beginning to do but if when you practice guys anything is possible and you know just practice 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 for the pointers I'm gonna do this on both on both fingers but we're gonna do two flowers so one on top and one at the bottom and on the pinky we're just gonna do one little flower
So with that same gold, I'm just gonna go ahead and apply some and spread it around on the flowers to create a little bit of a contrast, a little bit of a glitter effect, and I thought that that was a great idea. I really like how it looks, but I am removing the bigger um, glitters, as you guys can see, because I didn't want those in there. I thought they were a little too bulky for that nail. I just heard my daughter screaming. She is a screamer. She likes to play around. Anyway, guys, so I'm doing the same thing on all the little flowers, and we're going to move on with that. We're going to do these as well. All right, so let's move on. So this is the gel resin and activator spray by Mia's Secrets. And yeah, I love Mia's Secrets stuff. They have the best for a great quality place. But we're just picking up a little stone and we're gonna place them on the little flowers. Thought that that was a good idea. That, that's the best way to create also a bling design without too much bling. Or you could have also added something in the middle to create like a color contrast. You could have added like, I don't know, white on the middle. It would have looked pretty cute too. But anyway, we're going to do the middle finger. We're going to do a little um, design with the bling. And this one, I was freestyling it. Kind of had an idea of what I, wanted, what I wanted to do. But I think I didn't like how I applied this particular stone and then I went you'll see not this one there was another one but I applied this stone and I didn't like how it looked because I think I added too many of the smaller ones so you guys are gonna see me go back and fix that When I um, did the other one, I was doing, I was keeping that in mind when I was doing the other hand, which is this hand or this finger. Um, and I didn't like how I added too much of the smaller ones first. So I decided to add fewer smaller ones so that the bigger stone in the middle looked a lot better. So I, that's why I went back and fixed the other one. These stones are so cute. I don't know what it was about them today. These were like shining extra hard. They are not Swarovski, these are rhinestones. Rhinestones are made out of plastic. Swarovski is a brand of stones. They just, I wouldn't call them rhinestones. I don't know if other people will, but they are, I think, or I believe, don't quote me, but I believe they're made out of glass, the Swarovski ones. That's why I heard that the shine is a lot better. Like I said, um, oh, I'm sorry, let me explain this. So I did remove it with the, um, with this little bit right here, this extra, extra, extra course, so triple course bit made my job a lot easier. And then I applied the stones again in a better way that I thought looked better. But back to what I was saying about the stones, you guys. So some one of my subscribers told me about this store. I don't remember if it was beads online or something, but I'll leave that in the link down below, guys. Give me a chance to put everything up because I do like to post the videos and then go back and you know post all of the things in the description box. But anyway. That um, website that one of my subscribers told me about, shout out to you, girl. I will be putting your name here for giving me the recommendation because I did go on it and I haven't purchased them because I'm still going through all the stones that they have and there's so many to pick from. But the price, you guys, was like great. So I'm so excited to go and order everything. Um, I, like I said, thank you so much to my subscriber. I'll leave her name in the right here somewhere. But yeah, so anyway, now we're just gonna go ahead and apply the gel coat, the top coat, and this is by D&D. &D. Um, why do I use this top coat? Because it's only $5, and it's amazing, and the shine lasts so much, so why not? And it's so easy to apply. But anyway, we're just taking this top coat, and it is non-cleanse too, by the way, and we're just gonna apply it all over the nails. This is so pretty. I really love the way the marble one came out. I'm thinking of doing like an ombre set with this specific marble. I think that's what I really want to do, you guys. But I'm not really sure. That's something I think I'm going to do. But I'm, you guys, it is such a struggle with me because I am always changing my nails. And it's like I can never keep one thing. Anyway, I'm still going to show you guys. I most likely will be doing one hand of my nails tomorrow for you guys i'm not really sure though i just don't know what i want it's so hard so when my clients come to me and they're like i don't know i don't know what i want i 100 percent can relate you know what i mean so yeah we're doing the other hand too we're doing the top coat and 
Oh my gosh, I love that marble one. I think I'm definitely gonna do that marble one. Um, but yeah, guys, this this set right here it just came out so cute. I think it's the cutest thing, like the little flowers, the the diamond bling design in the middle, and that beautiful marble. This is just a beautiful toned down look. But at the same time, there's a lot going on. And the only thing I didn't do was do something on the thumb. I just didn't think it needed it. I feel like the white is so vibrant and needed, it needed to be by itself. And then right now I'm looking at it and like, hmm, maybe a stone would have helped. <laughs> anyway, so we're just adding cuticle oil to it. And the cuticle oil, I get it at Sally's. I just filled it up in this bottle that I bought at Cosmoprof. And it had a, like a little brush thing on it, but I replaced it with... Um, a little little dropper that I got from like Young Nails or something when I have because I have their um what are they called their little liquid colored monomer I guess um, I don't remember what they're called but anyway so yeah guys that's pretty much it the nails are already done we're just like I said applying cuticle oil and I'm also gonna add some lotion because for pictures you know, you don't want your clients looking a little dry. They don't like it either. And when I forget, I feel bad because I'm like, oh, shoot, they're going to get self-conscious. <laughs> I get self-conscious. But anyway, you guys, there are the nails. So, so cute. Such a clean look. Look how beautiful. There's a closer look. I am in love. All right, guys, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit your post notification bell so you are notified every time I upload new videos. Bye, guys.